everyone. My name is Angelique Jackson. I'm a film and media reporter at Variety, and thank you so much for joining this SAG Awards Q&A with the stars and executive producers of Little Fires Everywhere, Reese Witherspoon and Carrie Washington. Hello. Hi. Hi. Well, before we get started, we are going to take a quick look back at the series. Little Fires Everywhere is a story set in Shaker Heights. There's four different mothers in this piece that are all mothering under different circumstances. Elena Richardson's life is very well organized and she's a bit of a control freak. She has always grown up in a very wealthy, upper-class world. I, for one, have a real issue with this Yale essay topic. They're gonna punish you because you have good parents who've made good choices on your behalf. If Shaker Heights were a character, it would be Elena, and if Elena were a town, she'd be Shaker Heights. I'd conceived of Mia as she's very, very guarded, and I think Carrie brings such a great dramatization of that. I've been meaning to hire someone for my house like to be your maid? Yeah, I don't do that. Mia's not a character who's trying to make other people comfortable. How can we see ourselves when we're afraid to look at who we really are? Mia is profoundly changed by her time in Shaker Heights. <coughs> My character name is Baby Jo. She come from China. She was poor and she can't support his own baby. She's not her mother! She is an illegal alien! I will go talk to her. She doesn't get to be Maribel's mother anymore. I play Linda McCullough. She's a woman who has been sort of cut off at the knees in her infertility struggles. If you can help me, I'll lose my daughter. This isn't about you. It's not about me. It's about a child who belongs with her mother. Her mother is Linda. It is electric to watch these two ferocious energies just battle with each other over the course of this show. She's a liar. She's wreaking havoc on all of her lives. Her bubble of privilege really isolates her from having to examine herself. Mia's saying, like, do you think you're a good mother or you're a rich mother? Privilege has definite repercussions in the people who don't have it. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I feel like every time I watch this clip or watched a new episode, I was watching this series with my whole body. Every time you're just like, oh, 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 yep. What was it like experiencing this discourse that was always intended um, to be created by this series in real time when you were getting to engage with the audience as they're starting to have these really tough conversations? <laughs> um, it was so fun when the show went out into the world because, um, you know, it was like this was our baby. We worked so hard on this and poured so much love and joy um, and ferocity, as is mentioned in the clip, into it. And so um, it was just really a joy to be engaging with viewers online and, and with people, you know, even now when I, I, people say like, I started my quarantine with you, like when everything shut down, thank God we had little fires. Like people were so engaged and committed. It was really fun to read Twitter. Like Twitter just gave me so much life. I was so happy to see people. They just hated my character. <laughs> And then it was just fun. I never really got to play a character. You know, you always want to have a character that people aren't ambivalent about. They love your character. They hate your character. It was really fun to be on the end of so much, um, you know, vitriol. I don't know. <laughs> It was, well, it was funny to me. I loved it. Well, I mean, that's what you want with a series like this is you want strong responses. You you guys put so much into creating these characters and steering away from those stereotypes where Elena is not just an evil villain and Mia is not just a perfect angel. So I'd love to start with talking about that. How did you guys create a space together both as actors and producing partners um, to give these characters that roundness? Uh, Reese, I'll start with you. Well, Liz Taylor, our showrunner, I mean, she just assembled the most incredible writer's room. So all every 
great show when movie starts with the people who conceive it. And it was an incredibly diverse room. It was a room filled with people who were mothers, who were adoptive mothers, um, children of immigrants. There was, uh, there was a man in there. Um, it, it was so great as actors to watch the writing as the scripts would come in that really had this authentic perspective of what it meant to be a woman in America at, at a time that the world is so, I mean, the world is always so divided, but to really dig in and figure out that where are the commonalities that we don't see? Um, that was really interesting to me. Yeah. I mean, I, I think also Celeste did that with the novel, right? Like these characters have been, they were complex from the beginning. And I think that's part of what was so exciting for both Reese and I, because women are complicated beings. We're, we're human, you know, and we are, there are no just good guys or just bad guys and everybody's got secrets. And, um, and I think all of that, that rich complexity, you know, it starts with the word, it started with Celeste and, and it's always, we really have, I'm so thankful to Celeste and then to Liz for giving us the words, for giving us these, these beautiful characters that we just got to embody. Yeah. And in Celeste, in, in, an, in an interview, she explained how this story is challenging, well-meaning white women, if you will, that this story is, is really diving deep into these, these topics that we didn't, really like to spend a lot of time talking about, particularly in the 90s when the going thing was, oh, we don't see race, you know? And this this series came out before we had this renewed attention to our racial inequities, our racial inequalities. What was it like taking that step back and getting to have those conversations with the audience then um, as, as we're having it in the real world? What was it like getting to know that this story was a part of that conversation. I mean, it was really interesting that we were talking a lot in, in the, in the show about things that, you know, I didn't have a lot of awareness of in the nineties. Like I'd never heard the term white privilege. And so when Gary and I started discussing these things, I was like, you know, my nineties experience was a, as you said, Angelique, it was about being colorblind. And, and I thought that was the kind thing to say. And, um, you know, thinking about things through the 90s lens was really great, too. Almost in the same style that Mad Men got us to look at the 50s and the 60s through sexism and, you know, how advertising spoke with an odd voice towards women and just the human experience. So I think it, it gave us this opportunity to kind of remove ourselves. But then we, you know, fast forward to the show coming out. And then in June, you know, so many people waking up to a lot of ideas about, you know, what is white privilege? What, what why can't we say color? I, y'all, I, people were saying this in June. Why can't you say colorblind, you know? Mm-hmm. I think we also got to really invite people into these women's real experiences, because I think in, in our culture, we, we want to use these stereotypes, um, the angry black woman, white lady tears, right? Like we assign these, these stereotypical emotional identities to women based on race. And, and really what we invited audiences to do was to step inside and, and maybe understand a little bit where those tears come from, what that anger is about. Yeah, it's a, really about deconstructing those ideas, those notions that we have about people. And in this series, too, we get a chance to see the full breadth of the why behind me and Elena through flashbacks as well, getting to have Tiffany Boone and Anna Sophia Robb jump into those characters. As actors, how did knowing that those gaps were going to be filled in, um, sometimes even by another person, um, help you build those characters? I think that was a good, I thought I loved the flashback episodes because however you were feeling about Mia and and her character, however you were feeling about Elaine and her character immediately became deconstructed, as you said, because everyone's just an accumulation of their life experiences. The things they are told as a little girl or a little boy, the world they walked through, whether they went to this school or that school, whether they moved away from home or stayed home. And I think we have to have deeper compassion for people's lived experiences because 
um, they really can inform people and, you know, lead them down the wrong path um, or paths of, you know, confused identity. Um, and we judge people so harshly. We as mothers really want to judge each other. Like, I don't know if I would parent like that or, uh, oh, I would never let my teenage daughter wear that, you know, and we have to really start to think, why do we have these kind of snap judgments by each other? So that, that flashback episode was amazing. And of course, Tiffany and Anna Sophia were just incredible. They were brilliant. They, they just so judged brilliant. us, which is so yeah. great. <laughs> Was it a little weird watching them then play these characters? Because they're, I know you said they studied you, but like there are moments where I was like, did they de-age them? Is <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was very, I had never had the experience of creating a character with another person. And that was such a joy because a lot of, in acting, a lot of actors keep a lot of secrets about like what makes you who you are and what your secret dreams are. And, you know, and I got to share that with another person in this process. And it, that was really, really fun. Um, and, and it was also weird at times to watch the screen and be like, she's doing my thing, that thing I do, she's doing that thing. It was so crazy. Well, the other, of course, pairing here is the two of you in Mia and Elena and in the the various conversations and to full on face offs that these two characters have to have throughout the course of the series as they're ramping up. We saw a few of them in the clip. I want to start at the first one where Elena asked Mia to work in her home and the nuances of the ways in which she, uh, when she's confronted with the idea that, oh, are you asking me to be the maid? Uh, she tries to work around it. How did you guys um, go about creating those scenes together and, and creating that dynamic. Well, that was one of those places where the decision to make Mia a Black woman became something that we had to deal with in script, right? Like, because it's one thing when you have two white women and it's about class and you say, hey, come work for my family. But when, <laughs> given the history of slavery in this country, when a white woman asks a Black woman to come work in her home, it has a different cultural context. It has a different emotional weight. And so we had to figure out how to how to make that happen, right? Because that that those are the plot points of the book, but to bring all of the nuances of what that means between these two characters given race, it was so fun to explore that. Really, really fun. It was really fun to play um, opposite Carrie in that too. Um, <laughs> it's my favorite scene. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is because I feel like only, I say that because I have comfort with Carrie. I've known her as a friend for so long and I felt so safe as an artist with her to feel vulnerable enough to um, struggle and, and feel mm. embarrassed, but then also feel angry at her for judging me. And I'm not a racist and just the whole rainbow of experiences in that scene that she has as well. Is she saying this to me? It's her interpretation of what I'm saying. And the microaggressions in there are just, it was just, it was delightful to play. It and it, it, honestly, that's all you ever saw on the show. It was like. <laughs> We've told you a lot. Just in that moment, we have told you a lot about the that's, 90s and, and what people, how people treat each other. <laughs> that's it, man. That's the show. <laughs> That's kind of the crazy point is that there are so many moments in the show where it could just have been that one scene. It could have been a short film and you guys told us everything. And of course, oh. I have to bring up the brilliant line from Attica Locke um, about choices and how Elena didn't make good choices. She had good choices and how that has been something that has really encapsulated um, a lot of the conversation around this series. What does it mean to have that line and that conversation uh, have resonated so deeply with so many people. I remember over the summer when people were protesting, um, seeing signs, like people having signs saying, you didn't make good choices, you had good choices, being part of the protests and like spray painted on walls and on posters. And I just thought, wow, Attica, you really, you got to it. You got to some really deep core, um, unveiling about what this is all about, you know, about the assumptions we make and, and, and what we come into the world with, you know, that we don't come into the world on equal ground. Um, 
it's really, I just, I'm so grateful that she had that spark of brilliance to write that, to write that language for us to share. But also to bring that performance between the two of you in that scene as everything boils over um, between me and Elena. And we really see that, you know, they, they, the, all the trying between the two of them is officially over. Um, yeah. <laughs> Reese, what was that like for you? But I do, I do think that that scene was so powerful. I also think there was another scene that I really enjoyed that really oddly anticipated some things that happened in culture in June where my character comes in um, to the bathroom in like episode seven or eight and says to Carrie, I know about your past and I'm going to expose you and I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do like using her privilege over her weaponizing her privilege, you know, and that spoke to me. So that resonated with me a lot over the summer as I saw white women sometimes doing that. And, and I'm, Yes, weaponizing her privilege. And I, it was oddly prescient, some of the show. I mean, it's, you know, obviously topical and speaking about the world that we live in, but it felt very contemporary at times. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, because you guys were willing to have the tough conversations that people were having in private, but you decided to have it on an eight episode series for Hulu. So thank you for doing <laughs> that. And to wrap this up, I want to talk about the the other overarching theme of this series that is is probably the the biggest and most important is um, identity and womanhood and motherhood, which is what we led with in the clip. What did this teach you about the way that we look at mothers, the way you look at yourselves as mothers, uh, your mothers as mothers, um, and how we can do better to 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 be maybe more understanding of what it means to be a mother. I do. I think in general, you know, you have these two women who really think that their way of parenting is the way you really have these four women, right. Um, who all think that their, their ideology around motherhood, their identity as a mother is the way to do it. And so much of what I think the show invites us to discover is that there's no right way. There's no one way. There's no perfect way to mother that we're all doing the best we can with the tools we have. But, but Reese and I also talk about the fact that about, I don't know, we were in the pre-production phase and we were looking at some boards that the brilliant Lynn Paolo had put together, looking at costumes for the kids. And we were like, oh, I had that outfit. I had that outfit. And we realized that we were teenagers in the 90s. So therefore, in some way, we were playing our mothers. And it was really an opportunity to explore our own mother's journeys with a great deal of empathy and compassion and courage. Yeah, I would just say compassion. Exactly. I I never thought about what it was like for my mom. I never understood until I really took this journey of walking and, and, and thinking very deeply about what her experience was raising teenagers in the 90s who were, whose worlds were expanding and having greater compassion, I think, not only for my mother, but for all women who are doing the very best they can. The more compassionate we can be and the more we watch shows where we walk through different worlds and different people's life experiences, the deeper our empathy becomes. Well, this show, this series is, is such a fantastic um, look inside and, and, and request to the audience to look inside themselves and, and to really uh, take stock of what we think and how we treat others, like you said, about compassion. Um, so thank you all for joining us for this conversation. I know we could talk about these themes for days and days and days because there's so much to unpack with this series. Um, but thank you, Reese. Thank you, Carrie. And thank you to the SAG nominating committee for joining us for this Q&A. 